Here's an equation that, at first glance, looks absolutely terrifying. But there's something beautiful happening here that we're going to uncover together. The secret isn't to muscle through with brute force calculations, but to step back and look for the underlying structure. Let's start by taking this equation apart piece by piece. The first hint about what's really going on lies in these base numbers. Take a moment to really look at these numbers. 8, 27, 12, and 18. What's the common thread here? They all break down into powers of just two prime numbers, 2 and 3. And here's why that matters. When we rewrite everything in terms of powers of 2 and 3, we'll start seeing patterns with 2 to the x and 3 to the x that will unlock a clever substitution. 8 becomes 2 cubed, 27 becomes 3 cubed, 12 becomes 2 squared times 3, and 18 becomes 2 times 3 squared. Now we can use the power rule to reorganize these exponents in a much more revealing way. And look what emerges. Everything is now built around two fundamental pieces, 2 to the x and 3 to the x. To make this pattern crystal clear, we're going to use a substitution that will transform this intimidating expression into something much more manageable. Right now, this expression is still quite unwieldy, but we're about to see how a simple substitution can cut through all this complexity. Here's the key insight. Let's call 2 to the x simply a and 3 to the x simply b. This substitution is going to work beautifully, and here's something important to keep in mind. For any real value of x, both a and b are always positive. a equals 2 to the x is always greater than 0, and b equals 3 to the x is always greater than 0. And just like that, our intimidating exponential equation transforms into a clean algebraic fraction in terms of a and b. Now we're in familiar territory. We can use classic algebraic techniques to simplify this expression even further. Notice how both the numerator and denominator have structures we can factor. This is where things get really elegant. The numerator is a classic sum of cubes pattern. It factors as a plus b times the quantity a squared minus a times b plus b squared. Let's apply the sum of cubes formula to the top and factor out a times b from the bottom. Beautiful. After factoring, we can see there's a common factor of a plus b in both the top and bottom. Since a is positive and b is positive, a plus b is never zero and a times b is never zero. No division by zero issues here, so we can safely cancel that common factor. This simplification is our breakthrough moment. We've reduced the problem to something much more tractable. Now we're ready to solve what's essentially a hidden quadratic equation. Let's get rid of these fractions by cross multiplying. We multiply six times the expression on the left and seven times the denominator. This gives us 6 times the quantity a squared minus a times b plus b squared equals 7a times b. Let's distribute that 6 on the left side. This gives us 6a squared minus 6a times b plus 6b squared. To get this into standard quadratic form, we need to move everything to one side. We subtract 7a times b from both sides. Now we combine those middle terms. This gives us our homogeneous quadratic, 6a squared minus 13a times b plus 6b squared equals 0. This is what's called a homogeneous quadratic in a and b. We can divide everything by b squared, which is perfectly safe since b equals 3 to the x is always positive. This transforms our equation into a standard quadratic in the ratio a over b. Look at that. We now have a clean quadratic in terms of the ratio a over b. One more substitution will make this crystal clear. Let's call this ratio y by setting y equal to a over b. We get a beautiful, simple quadratic equation in y. We can solve this using the quadratic formula, but there's actually an even nicer way. This quadratic factors beautifully. When we factor it as 3y minus 2 times 2y minus 3, the solutions jump right out. 
The quadratic formula gives us the same answer, confirming our factorization. So y can be either 3 halves or 2 thirds. Now comes the final step, substituting back to find our values of x. Remember, y was our ratio a over b, which equals 2 thirds to the x. Here's something important. Since 2 thirds to the x is always positive and strictly decreasing, each positive y value corresponds to exactly one real x. In our first case, 2 thirds to the x equals 3 halves. Here's a neat trick. We can rewrite the right side using the same base as the left. 3 halves is just the reciprocal of 2 thirds, so it's 2 thirds to the negative one. If we wanted to be more formal, we could use logarithms x times the natural log of 2 thirds equals the natural log of 3 halves, which gives us x equals negative 1. Since the bases match, the exponents must match. Our first solution is x equals negative 1. Our second case is even simpler. 2 thirds to the x equals 2 thirds. This is straightforward. We can write 2 thirds as 2 thirds to the first power, making that exponent explicit we immediately see that our second solution is x equals 1. Before we celebrate, let's double-check these solutions by plugging them back into our original equation. For x equals 1, we get 8 plus 27 in the numerator, 12 plus 18 in the denominator. That's 35 over 30, which simplifies to 7 sixths. Perfect. For x equals negative 1, we're dealing with reciprocals, so this takes a bit more work. After working through the common denominators and simplifying, we get the exact same result. 35 over 30, which is 7 sixths. Both solutions check out beautifully. Now, let's see this graphically. We'll plot both sides of our original equation and see where they intersect. Let's set up our coordinate system. The blue curve shows how the left side of our equation behaves, while the green line is the constant right side at 7 sixths. The solutions to our equation are simply the x-coordinates where these curves cross, and there they are. The intersections occur exactly at x equals negative 1 and x equals 1, confirming our algebraic work. So what's the big picture here? For real values of x, we have exactly two solutions. x equals negative 1 and x equals 1. What started as an intimidating exponential equation yielded to careful structural analysis and clever substitutions. The key insight was recognizing the hidden patterns in the base numbers and transforming the problem into familiar algebraic territory. This is a beautiful example of how the right perspective can turn complexity into elegance. Thanks for working through this problem with me. If you enjoyed seeing how structural thinking can unlock seemingly complex equations, consider giving this video a like and subscribing for more mathematical explorations.